Hey, greetings and praise the Lord. Welcome to the CMCM and uh, that is the Church Ministers Children and Ministers Network in Telecast. It is brought to you every Saturday and uh, it is for the Church Ministers and Church Ministers Children. That does not mean that you cannot get involved because if you are born again, you need to be serving the Lord. You need to be a minister. And therefore, your children are ministers. If your parents are serving the Lord, you're a child of a minister. So each one of us, we need to have a place in the body of Christ where we are serving the Lord. And because all of us, we are, we are answerable because what have you done today for the Lord? And what are your children doing for the Lord? We need to be involved. We need to be active. We need to make sure that all of us are doing something in the kingdom. And what is hindering us from not doing what God wants us to do every day? We are in warfare. And that is why in today we are going to see the best way of raising champions that are going to win in every battle that the enemy is causing because the enemy does not want us to do our assignments as God has given us because all of us, each one of us, we have all unique assignments and they need to be done. But the enemy is out there to make sure you are not able to do it. All of us, we are supposed to be soldiers in the army of the Lord. Yes, when you look at soldiers, well, they look glamorous, isn't it? When you look at a soldier, they look great. But until one that you know becomes a casualty, that is when you know that war is not sweet. And that is why we need also to know that we are in the same spiritual war, spiritual arena. In the spiritual arena, spiritual warfare is also a very, I mean, it's not just a, a subject. Spiritual warfare is not just something to lecture. It is not just something to read in books. It is not just something that we just preach. But let me tell you, we are casualties of the enemy's schemes. So we need to know what kind of warfare and especially our children. They also need to know that they are in warfare, not just their parents, but they need to know they are in their welfare. So before I invite the minister for today, our guest, we are going to we are going to to read something about the war the spiritual warfare as the and as he teaches us on how to raise a godly seed that the spiritual children how we should raise them well let's pray heavenly father in the name of your son jesus christ we are grateful for giving us yet this wonderful time where we can hear your word and especially in knowing what our assignments are together with our children so that father as we know you are coming soon your son is coming to take the church home very soon that none of us will be left behind that we'll all be ready and prepared and we all have fought every battle and won every battle and become victorious and become champions for Christ. We thank you and we give you praise as uh, we pray that each and every person that is going to hear this word, their lives will never be the same, but they will be transformed King of Glory to do their assignments well for the glory and honor of the Lord. We honor you and give you praise in Jesus name. Amen. Now turn with me into your Bibles that is uh, at uh, uh, in Ephesians chapter 6 that is going to be our main text for today and even with our speaker but for me I'm going to concentrate on verse 10 to verse 18 where the Bible says that finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on uh, the whole armor of God and you that you may be able to stand against against the wiles of the devil for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principality, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having guarded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, 
with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always in all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. You hear that? Well, so we, we, before, um, before I continue to elaborate on that, let me bring forth, um, invite the servant of God to come and share with us. And we are blessed to, to have the man of God. And this is Apostle, uh, Peter Chacha, all the way from, uh, uh, and, uh, the, the, all the way from Nakuru, Kenya. Uh, welcome, uh, servant of God and be a blessing in this, uh, ministry at this time. Praise Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. This is Apostle Peter Chacha from the Anointed of God Ministries in Akuru, Kenya. I am grateful to be to be on the platform and uh, ministering to church ministers' children <clears throat> and the ministers, church ministers. It's a, a blessing. Thank you so much, Bishop Dr. Grace, for this great invite. I don't take it for granted because I know that God has always a plan and a wonderful moment. It's a blessing and it's a great joy to be a minister, church minister. When we talk about church ministers, we are not only talking about pastors, apostles, <clears throat> evangelists, and uh, great prophets. We are also talking about the people who serve in the church, like uh, the ushers, you know, the intercessors, when we are talking about the people that uh, you know are uh, ministering, you know the lead, the, the elders, you know all the people that are serving the church, uh, those who do ministry, the evangelists, these are uh, great people. And when we talk about them, you know we have children, and I'm blessed to to raise up three sons. My firstborn is 19, and, um, and my lastborn is nine. And they are all boys, and uh, it's an exciting thing to raise children. It's a blessing. So I'm blessed to be <clears throat> a father of sons. And when I see that, I also don't take it uh, for the sake of it, because I know how it, it is a glorious moment to just be a blessing and be a father and be, you know, be able to raise children in the ways of God. And uh, so there are blessings that I have received as a father, you know, of, or, or parents of, 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 of sons, especially now that I'm a father of teenagers. You know, teenagers they try to come up with things sometimes that are funny. Sometimes they behave in a way that you as a parent, you would not want to be comfortable about it. And the, the funny things is that uh, always in the church you dis discover the members of the church, especially those who come to attend the church, most of the times they expect church ministers, the children, to be different, to behave different, to walk different, to dress different. You know, they, they don't expect them to make mistakes. And sometimes they will try to, you know, you know, rebuke them. You know, every time they will say, and you are a pastor's child, a pastor's son. It, it's okay. But I want you to know something. It is always good, and this is what I have done in my life. I want to make sure that my children grow up knowing that they are children. Sometimes I allow them to make mistakes. Of course, as a parent, you'll be angry when you see your son or your daughter doing something that you don't like. And it's, uh, it's, it's painful sometimes when they go wrong, especially when you teach them the right things. But remember also members in the church, some of them, we teach them things and they still do the opposite. But you know, it is also something that you have to know that even though your children are expected to behave uniquely, and we pray for them to do that. But we also remember, even when they do mistakes, we don't treat them as pastor's kids or minister's kids. We have to treat them as children. So teach them in the ways of God, not in the ways of a pastor. Because some of them, you know, they go through a lot. For example, you know, in pastor's homes, 
you know, sometimes he's full of people. Every time they, you know, guests come in town, they come to the pastor. And sometimes you don't even have the time to bond and raise your children. So I'm happy to have, to raise my children and especially sometimes being there and sometimes seeing them making fun of me. You know, like when I give and share my stories, how I grew up as a young person or a young boy, you know, they will laugh. They will want always to hear and ask me to tell them about how I was when I was young you know the times were different you know now they know the phones they can do anything beyond even what you know so I make them understand yes that time was different and this time is different but we expect them to serve God we expect them to love God not because of us but because they need to love God on their own so that they would be able to go to heaven when the time comes and that's very important so they never miss the rapture now there are things that I want to share and also the challenges that you experience as a parent of, of teenagers is number one they will always try to be cheeky you know, you know, one day, you know, when my son was, uh, you know, had done his primary education, you know, he came, you know, I discovered he had a girlfriend, you know, that is a young boy and he feels he's big. But, you know, I, I laughed it up because, you know, when we were young, we also tried to get girlfriends here and there and, you know, growing up. So, you know, I tried to talk to him and show him why it is not a time yet. He needs to concentrate with the school. And he continued, you know, that is interesting. So sometimes they will try to be cheeky. Sometimes the, the expectations on them will be so big that sometimes they feel stressed. So as a parent, you need to begin raising them, showing them, yes, these things are expected of you. And I am here to help you become who you are supposed to be without a condemnation. It is good to train them. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that they should go. But when you are training, it is different from attacking. You know, sometimes we take the road and we try to help them, which is very good. But at the same time, it's also good to give them an opportunity to talk to you, to help you, you know, to make them understand that this is wrong and this is how we solve it. Now, the book of Ephesians is a book that when we read it, many a times we read the, the chapter 6, we read the first ch verse. Chapter 6 is talking about family life, workplace, and spiritual warfare. And spiritual warfare is very important because it's like, that's where Paul begins to say, and finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In other words, above all these things that I have shared with you, above all, do spiritual warfare. Because as you raise kids, the devil will try to interfere and frustrate them and mislead them. You have to do spiritual warfare and make sure your children grow to fear the Lord and to walk in the Lord and serve the Lord as you serve God. Now, when we read the verse, the, 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 the first verse, it says, children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. You know, Paul is talking to the children and always as parents, we always try to tell them, you know, the Bible says, obey your parents. But you, it's good to read beyond. Honor thy father and my mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. That's very powerful. And it's good for a child to obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And every parent would want to raise a child or a kid that obey and walks in obedience and in the fear of God. That's very important. But in the verse, uh, uh, verse 3, that it may be well with thee, and thou may live long on the earth. Very powerful for the kids. Always important. I obey my parents even now. I listen to them. I honor them. I listen when they talk. I don't take them for granted because I know the value of having a parent. Now I know how it, it costs for a parent to raise a child, to educate them, to struggle until they become who they are. I am always proud of my parents and I listen to them even at my age because I know the value now more. And verse 4, very important. And ye fathers provoke not uh, your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. In other words, bring them, uh, in a, you know, train them instead of just provoking them, train them. 
In other words, instead of complaining every time, you know, causing them to feel bad, you know, sometimes we react and sometimes we don't listen. We don't, sometimes somebody does a mistake. We all do mistakes. Sometimes it's good to take a, an opportunity, listen to that person. Don't always be rash, you know, to talk negative, attack and make that child feel bad, but train them. That's what the Bible says. Number two, uh, you know, uh, in a domination or in the in the, in 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 the character, yeah? exhort them, help them to be, you know, to walk in the ways of God, in the character of God. In other words, train them in the in the nature, in the nature. That means the whole training and admonition. That means the character of God. You see, very very important. You know, rebuking them. Show them the right way. Rebuke them. Tell them this is wrong. This is not what you are supposed to be doing. Make sure you do the right thing so that you don't fail. You don't go in the wrong direction. So as a parent, make sure you raise your children in the fear of God. Love them. Show them care. Show them that you care for them. Show that you love them. Show that you are there for them. Don't always be negative. I used to, you know, be tough. And I'm tough on my children. They know that. Whenever they do something wrong, they always, they will never want to have me know it first. They will go to their mom. But also, I want to make sure they understand as much as I hate what they do, I also love them. And I want them to grow in the fear of God and in the love of Christ. That is my desire as a father. I want to pray for you as a parent and I want to pray for you as a child. That God may minister to you, guide you, and show you the direction and the ways of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person that has been listening to me. Bless them, keep them safe, protect them, and show us how to raise the children in the fear and in the ways of God. Help us, Lord, to do your will and to train up our child in the way they should go. And at the end of it, they will not forget you or move in the wrong direction because you protect them, preserve them, and cover them by your glory in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for watching. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, uh, Bishop Dr. Grace. May the Lord bless you. You are doing a great work for, for the ministers and for the church ministers' children. May the Lord bless you, protect you, and cause you to continue getting blessed and being a blessing to our generation. Thank you, and God bless you, and cover you with his glory in everything that you touch to do. May you see the prosperity of God. Bless you, and be prosperous in every way, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Apostle Chacha, for that powerful, powerful testimony and even how you have raised those champions uh, for Christ. We know that God is going to continue using you powerfully as uh, we'll be bringing them on board also to share on how it, it is to be raised in a minister's uh, home and what they are also doing in the kingdom of God and how they are carrying their weapons of warfare. So we, we, we are going to invite you again and also invite uh, your sons to come and be a blessing on this platform. And um, we know very well as we have uh, we have read in the word of God that is in Ephesians uh, chapter 6 verses 10 to 18 that um, we, we are supposed to put on. We are told that we stand strong and uh, so that we can stand the words of the enemy and uh, we, we have been told uh, to stand and we are told uh, the first thing we need to do is we have the belt of truth and uh, when you're talking about the belt of truth soldiers uh, belt serve as a foundation of his armor it holds his sword and his breastplate because satan is the father of lies then he cannot stand against the truth, Jesus. Because even Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So victory in spiritual warfare starts with the truth. So I'm urging each and every one of you, can we be truthful? Each and every child of the minister and all ministers, let us, if there is anything we need to do every day, it is to be truthful. And we are going to win this battle because the father of lies cannot stand the truth that Jesus of Jesus Christ. 
and then the next one we need to do is uh we are supposed to have the breastplate of righteousness the, all these are on the same verse the breast the breastplate of righteousness guarded the heart uh, and uh, the source of the soldier's life because your heart has to be guarded that is the source of your life and uh, in, in a familiar way righteousness protects the spiritual life of the christian our righteousness comes not from ourselves but from christ you can see that one also in philippians 3 9 uh, verse 9 the other thing we also need to know is our feet need to be protected by the gospel of peace that is the soldier's heavy uh, the the soldier's heavy armor armored sandals gave him traction and security in the heat of the battle because in the heat of the battle you need to make sure that your feet are properly guarded and um, and um, how are they going to be guarded so our um so our uh how our feet going to be guarded uh so our peace with god through jesus christ gives us security in the face of satan's accusation you can also see that one in philippians chapter 4 verse 7 then the other one that we need to know is we need to have the shield of faith that is uh that is uh, uh ephesians 6 16 um that is the shield of faith when we talk about the soldiers, a leather covered shield could be soaked in water to extinguish flaming arrows of enemy. Faith in God's promises deflects and extinguishes the lies of the, of Satan. You can see that also in Proverbs chapter 30 verses, uh, verses, uh, five and also first John chapter five verses four. Then we also we also have the helmet of salvation, that is uh, six seventeen uh, Ephesians six seventeen. The armored helmet protected the soldier's brain, since the primary battlefield is spiritual warfare. Is the, is the Christian's mind assurance of salvation defeats the doubt Satan uses to attack to attackers, and you can see more on that in John ten twenty eight. Then we are also going to see the sword of the spirit, uh, the word, uh, the sword of the spirit, the word of God that is in uh, still the same, uh, that is uh, six, um, that is uh, Ephesians six seventeen. Paul noted only one offensive weapon, the soldier's sword. For the Christian, the sword is the word of God, that is an offensive weapon, and. Um, and you can also you 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 it is that is that that when we are talking about this uh when we talk about this this one this is the only this is the only weapon for offensive for for the um in the christian's armor it which is the word of god and you know what we the, this word we we are told that uh, this word we can we can have the rema word instant word um which is going to give us victory over satan especially in the wilderness we have the rema word immediately we are able to know and detect what the enemy is planning to do and we are able to avoid and get out of it or even conquer the enemy with that word we see how when jesus was when Je when jesus was uh, tested uh, or tempted in the wilderness what happened he was able to overcome the enemy with the word it is written so that is the word that is going to give us victory. The Rema word. Let's have it. We need to have the logos. We need to also to have the Rema word, which is able to get extinguished and even get rid of the enemy and uh, fight this battle and win and become victorious. Glory to Jesus. So we, we, we have, we, we are here also told we are, we need also to be prayerful and praying for others. Let us pray and make sure that as we are praying, that uh, we, we pray, we, we, because we love others. That is where we are praying for them. May the Lord bless you, especially CMCs. Make sure you put on the whole armor of God because you cannot make it. And the only way you're going to make it is with Christ. Without Christ, you cannot win any battle. You can't win. You only win these battles with Christ. May the Lord bless you for being with us today. Shalom. Shalom. Mm -hmm.